Welcome to Earned Income and Education Credits. The purpose of this lesson is to inform you about some credits that you may very well qualify for today or that your family may qualify for. Every year, millions of dollars are, of eligible tax credits are just left on the table by low and middle income families. These families don't realize that they might qualify for these credits and they don't know what credits are available. They also don't know how to claim these credits. I'm going to start with a very big one that many people don't realize they qualify for, and that's the Earned Income Tax Credit. This credit helps families keep more money in their pocket. One of the ways that it does this is that if you qualify on your W-4, you can fill out that you qualify and your employer will withhold less federal tax. If you don't do that and you file your tax return and you qualify, the federal government will give you money back if you qualify. Now this credit is refundable, which means that even if you don't owe any money, you can get money back. This credit, the Earned Income Tax Credit, mostly benefits families with children. However, there is a smaller credit available for families without children. Here is a chart just giving you an overview of the maximum credit available in the year 2013 and some requirements. So, your earned income and adjusted gross income much, must each be less than. So, what is adjusted gross income? You should think of it as taxable income. Remember, we've talked about taxable income. You might make a certain amount of dollars, we'll call that your gross income, but then things come out of that. And then you end up with your taxable income. You'll see when we start looking at the Federal Form 1040 that you may have multiple sources of income that can all add up to be your taxable income. But either way, what you earn and your tax pay, taxable income must be less than, and here's some limits. If you have no children and you're single, it has to be less than 14340 If you are single with one child, it has to be less than 37870 And there are some limits if you are married filing joint as well. But you can see that with three or more children, you can make as much as 51567 if you're married and still qualify. Here's the maximum credit you can receive. With no children, you may be able to receive up to 487 free dollars. If you have one child, you may be eligible to receive 3,250, and so on. The earned income tax credit, however, is based on a taxpayer's earned income. So we look at the income from wages, if you work for somebody, or from your own business if you're self-employed. Here's some definitions of different types of earned income. Wages, salaries, union strike benefits, long-term disability benefits, and net earnings from self-employment. All these count towards your earned income. This is different than unearned income, which is more like interest earned on a savings account or a mutual fund or dividends. Here are some requirements, though, to claim the credit. So you must have earned income. If you don't work and you don't have any earned income, you can't claim the credit. The premise behind this is to encourage people to actually get a job. If you're working and you're earning money, the government will pay you. If you aren't working and you aren't earning money, then you aren't eligible to receive the earned income tax credit. You also have to have a valid Social Security number and your investment is income is limited to 3100 Now let's think about why that might be. Well, what if you received a bunch of money that you put into an account, so you have all these assets, but they're just not producing a ton of income, but they're probably going to produce at least $3,100. Well, the idea is that you still have a lot of money. You're just not maybe spending it or, or using it all. So they look at investment income as 3100 or less in order to claim this credit. You also cannot file married filing separately. You have to be a U.S. citizen or resident alien all year, and you cannot be claimed on another person ta person's taxes. So you cannot be a qualifying child of another person. And this last one relates to foreign earned income.
Now, if you don't have a child, there's some additional limitations. You must be between 25 and 65 to claim this if you don't have a child. And again, you and your spouse, if you're filing joint, cannot be claimed on somebody else's tax return, and you must have lived in the United States more than half the tax year. Just like the federal income tax tables, earned income credit also has tables. The way that you read this table is you look over here on the left. It says if the amount you are looking up from the worksheet is at least this amount, but less than this, so it's the same way. Now what is this amount that you are looking up from the worksheet? Well, if you were to fill out the worksheet, you would realize that this amount is basically your taxable income, just to give you a rough idea. So if your taxable income, let's say, was between $3,000 and $3,050 over here, you were single, head of household, or a qualifying widower, and the number of children you have, let's say you were single with one child, you would be eligible for a credit of $1,029. Let's look at an overview of education tax credits. It's an extremely simple tool, but also extremely pointy. This tax tip is for people who are paying for higher education. You can take one of three possible tax breaks. Two of them are good, the third one you should just forget about. Before I list them, I have a couple of general points. You qualify for education tax breaks if you're paying to educate yourself, your spouse, or a dependent, such as a child. The school can be public, private, for-profit, online, it doesn't matter as long as it's accredited. The tax break applies to the cost of tuition and fees, but not to room and board. And there are income limits to qualify. Most taxpayers will pass, but not everyone. So here's my guide. First, for a student who is studying for a degree or a certificate at least half time, what you'd call the normal going to college, here's where you'd use the American Opportunity Credit. It's good for the first four years of higher education. For every student in your family, you can write off up to 100% of the first $2,000 in expenses and 25% of the next $2,000. That is $2,500 per person. This tax credit covers course-related books and equipment as well as tuition and fees. Now, if someone else helped you pay for tuition, say a grandparent, you still get the tax credit as long as the student is your tax dependent. There is an income limit on this tax break. Singles and heads of households get the full credit on adjusted incomes up to $80,000. The credit goes down as income rises and phases out at $90,000. Married couples filing jointly get the full credit on incomes up to $160,000, phasing out at $180,000. The second possible good tax credit is for graduate students, fifth year students, or people who are taking only a course or two for pleasure. It's called the Lifetime Learning Credit. With this credit, you can write off 20% of up to $10,000 in tuition and fees for a maximum credit of $2,000. Please note that that's $2,000 total, no matter how many students in your family are studying this way. The credit includes the cost of courses taken to improve your job skills, so it's good for people who are training for something new. The income limits are the same as those for the American Opportunity Credit. I've put them back up here so that you can look at them quickly. Finally, for the useless tax break, there is a tax deduction for tuition and fees. It's either $4,000 or $2,000 depending on your income. Now at first look, a $4,000 write-off might sound great, but tax deductions are not worth nearly as much as tax credits. A credit reduces your taxes dollar for dollar. The American Opportunity Credit saves you $2,500 right off the top. Deductions simply reduce your taxable income. A $4,000 deduction in the 15% bracket would save you just $600 in tax. Now, I'm sorry for all these numbers, but I wanted to make the point. Tax credits are almost always better than deductions. 
Now, the school will have sent you a Form T-1098 telling you how much you paid in qualified tuition and fees. So don't forget to use it when you're filling in your tax return. I'm Jane Bryant Quinn for DimeSpring.com and The Street. Okay, and that was an overview of education credits. Those are another very important type of credit that you may be eligible for, especially if you're going to be going to post-secondary school next year. This credit is good even if somebody else gives you money to help you pay for that, as long as you are only claiming yourself. Okay, let's do a little test. Which credit and how much? And these are related to the education credits. Remember that we have two big ones, the American Opportunity Fund and the Lifetime Learning Credit. So, you are at the end of your first year of post-secondary school. You paid $3,600 for the year in tuition and $1,500 in room and board. Which credit should you take and how much are you going to get? Hmm, well remember, the American Opportunity Credit is good for the first four years of your post-secondary education. Hopefully you can remember how to apply that credit. So we would choose the American Opportunity Credit because we can get a maximum of 2500 with that credit. If you remember that the Lifetime Learning Credit only gives you up to 2000 So let's look at the American Opportunity Credit. Now how can we determine how much we would get? Well, remember this. We get 100% of the first 2000 we spend, so we get a $2,000 credit because we spent $3,600. And then we get to take 25% or 0.25 of the amount remaining. Well, $3,600 minus the $2,000 we already took leaves $1,600 remaining. If we multiply these and add to $2,000, we would get an opportunity credit of $2,400 to go against our tax liability. So if we calculated our taxes and we found out that we owed $3,000, well, we can take $2,400 away from that and we would only owe $600. On the other hand, if we had a tax liability, let's just say of $400, well, the American Opportunity Credit will end up giving us a refund of $2,000. Let's look at one more example. Again, which credit and how much? In this example, you're going back to school to take a refresher math course for your job as an accountant. So we're going to assume that you already have been to college, you've spent four years in school, and you are an accountant. You're going to go back to school and you pay $1,500 for the course in tuition. Now on the last example, we also paid room and board, but remember that you don't get a deduction for room and board. In this example, we paid only $1,500 for the course. That was our tuition. Hmm. Well, we're past the four years, so we can no longer take the American Opportunity Credit, but we could take the Lifetime Learning Credit. Now how did that work again? Well, remember this. With the Lifetime Learning Credit, you can take 20% of whatever you spend up to $10,000. We spent $1,500, so we're going to multiply that by 20%. We can do a $300 credit for the Lifetime Learning Credit. If you need to, go back to the video and write some notes on the American Opportunity Fund and the Lifetime Learning Credit. You may also want to take some notes on the Earned Income Tax Credit. Those are the three big tax credits that are available to you that you may not even know you qualify for. So let's wrap up. The EITC, Opportunity Fund, and Lifetime Learning Credits are available for families who are in the low to middle income categories, which is very many Americans. These credits can provide opportunities to go to school by making tuition more affordable, as well as providing for a reduced tax burden by offsetting the amount of tax you could potentially owe. And that concludes our lesson today on different tax credits.